name is Gracie Brocious, and today we will be talking about women's Civil War fashion. To start, did you know that one woman's dress could weigh up to 30 pounds? This is equal to 60 water bottles in weight. So during the first part of the day, we are going to put on pantlets. Pantlets are basically pants that are in two pieces. They have an open crotch. They button and tie right here in the middle and in the back so that we can use the bathroom. Now we move on to the chemise. The chemise is like a small nightgown. It is used to soak up sweat and oftentimes women would have many of this piece. Moving on to the next part is our corset. Corsets Corsets were a very popular thing back in the day to get that waist, wasp waist. You can see that it is lace up in the back and I'll put it on this mannequin here. It snaps in the front. Corsets were often made of whalebone, steel, which is what this is made of, and horsehair. And then this would tighten up and constrict the waist. These cause many problems for women, such as fainting, dizziness, headaches, and stomach aches. Women also wore corsets when they were pregnant, not while they were at home, but if they would ever go out calling on people or to town, they would wear these corsets, which was very detrimental to the baby. Now we move on to the hoop skirt. According to Kate Hadlin, these were called tippers or tilters because of how they move. I'm just going to pin this here. So the, these are why women started wearing pantlets because as you can see, there's a lot of movement in this, even if I just like let it go. See, it still moves. So, the pantlets were made to keep your ankles covered because it was very unladylike back in the day to have your ankles uncovered. These were also very dangerous because of fires and horses. Horses don't like a lot of movement. As a Civil War reenactor, I've been working with my horses to get them used to this, but a lot of women would die because of being trampled or dragged because a horse would spook on the hoop skirt. Now we move to the bustle. This is a pillow form bustle. This is the only type of bustle that would be worn with a hoop skirt. Oftentimes, other bustles were made of leather and steel, just like our corset and hoop skirt. Can't see, it just ties in the front like the drawers would. And again, the whole reason for a bustle is to give the illusion of your waist being smaller. I'll turn this sideways so you can see how the bustle is. And it just lays there. So moving on to dresses, there are three main types of dresses. You have your work dress, which is used for working, obviously. Sometimes women wouldn't wear the hoop underneath their work dress. And we have what mine is, is an evening dress. A lot of times the evening dresses had prints. Mine's plaid, as you can see. The difference between these and the work dresses are the prints. And the fact that work dresses don't have a lot of lace because if we're working with fire, that's not going to work very well. So I, a lot of times women had more than one person helping them get dressed because of all these layers. Because it, it's very hard to get dressed from experience. It's very hard to get dressed. From that. So I'll just put that back. There's the bottom. Top. You can see the lace on the sleeves to show that it's an evening dress. And then the ball gowns were off the shoulder. Off the 
shoulder dresses allowed women to show off their very pale skin. Unlike today, pale skin was what you wanted to have because it showed that you didn't have to work. Unlike today, we like our tans. As a redhead, I don't tan, but what very little tan I get, I like. So there's my outfit, my eve evening calling outfit. Obviously the ball gowns were more dressed up with la more laces. You've seen the Southern Belle dresses with Scarlett O'Hara. Now we'll move on to our shawls. Shawls were the main way of keeping warm. They were triangular and one size fits all. I'll use this blanket to kind of show you how a shawl would work. Shawls were very popular with hoop skirts because they kept, they just draped nicely. As you can see, that just drapes nice, nicely down the back. They also wrapped babies in these because they were so large. Now we move on to hats. It was very, very highly frowned upon during these days to run around with a bare head. So, poor women and slaves would wear scarves around their head. Now, the middle class and upper class ladies would wear hats. These hats were made of felt, velvet, silk, straw, and many other things. They were often crafted with ostrich feathers because back then it was very inexpensive to get a hold of ostrich feathers. And you could also dye them many different colors to match your dresses. So if you would like to hear any more about Civil War fashion, just let me know and I'd be happy to make another video. Thank you for watching and bye.